go ahead and buckle in, strap up, maybe turn the volume down a little bit because this episode is about to be, let's look at the time, a, a, probably a 30-minute rant of everything that's wrong with the Pistons right now and why they're making almost every game an incredibly tough watch for all of us. Stay tuned. Today's episode, Locked on Pistons. You are Locked on Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked on Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. So the very first thing I want to do is say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Eve, and Merry Christmas to all of you guys out there. I hope you guys uh, you know, get the presents that you want. If you're a little bit younger, if you're a little bit older, hopefully your kids get you guys some nice presents. Um, and hopefully you guys just enjoy a really nice time with your family at this time of year. Um, just hope you guys enjoy the weekend and, and have a lot of fun on Christmas. Um, I told you guys, you guys were going to get a Christmas Eve episode and I think you guys are going to like this. I think this is going to be a little bit of a treat because I'm about to rant for like the next 30 minutes. I can't do, I can't hold it no more. I, I have to just, I, I have to let it all out. I'm recording this right after the Atlanta Hawks game. The Pistons just lost. The game literally just ended like seven minutes ago. I didn't usually I take a little bit of time to, you know, you know, write some stuff down and, you know, prep, prep the show around. But I'm like, you know what? No, I just need to get right into this with this energy, how I'm feeling and just get right into it. So everything you're getting here is just raw. There's no planning to this. This is just raw. I know what I want to talk about each segment, but that's all. That's the only planning I have. So this Hawks game was the 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 best example for every single thing that is wrong with the Detroit Pistons. Everything that's wrong with this team was on full display in this game. Other games, there's, you can point to some things that were wrong with it. No, every single thing that's wrong with this team was shown on the bright lights against the, against the Atlanta Hawks. And I, I'm, I, there's so much stuff I want to talk about. I don't even, like, I could go so many different places. But the very first thing, that we have to talk about. The Pistons have a roster issue. And no, when I say a roster issue, I don't mean a roster issue in terms of getting more wins or pushing for the play-in. This team isn't good enough to push for the play-in. Obviously, no, I don't care about that. That's not what I'm talking about. This team has a roster issue of guys who don't fit together at all. This team does not fit. This team... It, it's a it, not only is it a bad roster, but we I expected that. I told you guys before the year, I didn't think this team was going to be good. So they have you know a bad roster right now, full of young guys. But these guys don't play the right way. It, none, no one fits together, and it, it it's just it's it's oh my god, it's so hard to watch every night. And I think this year, which is the whole purpose of what this year was, so I'll give it a little bit of a pass to Troy Weaver in like the bigger picture, because it was kind of the point of this year, but to find out who is staying on this team moving forward. Who do you can can you keep moving forward a part of this restoration, building a good team? This was the year to find out. And God, I think you 100% have found this out. I think you 100% can, can figure out the type of players that may need to go and the type of players that may need to stay. The biggest issue with the Pistons is that every single player on the, they have one player. They have one basketball player in their rotation that looks to play the right way. They have one basketball player in the rotation who consistently tries to play team basketball, who will consistently pass to the open guy, and is just focused on playing the right way. They have one basketball player in the rotation who does it. His name's Killian Hayes. He's the only one. Killian is the only one that looks to play the right way, pass to the open guy, and play together. He's not out there looking for his all the time. We throughout the whole throughout his whole career, we've asked Killian to be more selfish. We want him to be more aggressive, more confident, and we've seen that from him. But I think we all would agree that despite the fact that he's grown in that department and he is a little bit more selfish and he tries to be a little bit more aggressive, he still plays the right way. He still plays within the team. He's still trying to play the right way, even with him developing that part. You can't say the same for literally any other player on this roster, in this rotation. 
Boyan Bogdanovich is one of the worst passers on the team. Tonight, he had one assist of three turnovers. All three turnovers were awful. He's one of the worst passers on the team. He doesn't look to pass. He's looking to score every single play. Which, again, I'll get to the end. When I get to the end of this segment, you'll see that it's okay to have one of these guys. You know, maybe two of these guys. But your whole roster can't be of guys that are only looking for themselves. Boyan Bogdanovich looking for himself. And the problem, before I keep going with who, some of the other players who also are like this, you have players like Isaiah Stewart who are not necessarily just looking for themselves, but simply don't have it in their game to look for other people. So Isaiah Stewart's playing the four. He's getting chased off the line a lot of times. And there was multiple occasions in this game where he got chased off the line and the open kick out to the opposite wing or the, the same side corner was there. But he's not, he's not used to playing the four. So now every time he dribble drives off a closeout, someone forces him off the three-point line, it's a forced dribble drive around the rim. And he's missing it because it's not the right read. He's driving into two people. But I can't even get too mad about Stu because Stu's not used to this. This is his development. He's trying to get better at that. So if you don't have players who are actively looking only for themselves, you have other players who just don't have it in their game and are trying to develop it and it's coming along a little slower. So Boyan, looking for himself. Stu's trying to develop it. Duran, Duran makes some nice passes. Jaden Ivey, he is looking for himself. Jaden Ivey looks for himself to score. Now, look, we love you guys love Jaden Ivey. Look, you could this is not saying that Jaden Ivey is not good or he was a bad pick, or it's not saying any of that. It's just a simple fact that when Jaden Ivey gets the ball in his hands, he is looking to score the basketball. He's looking for himself. There was a possession in the second quarter where people were happy that he scored, and I was just my mind was just I couldn't believe it. Yes, he ended up scoring, but Sadiq Bay was right next to him, literally five feet away from him, wide open for five seconds. Sadiq started clapping for the ball. The, the Hawks just weren't guarding him. I don't know where his defender was, but he was wide open. Jane Ivey looks at him wide open and waves him off and goes ISO. Yes, he ended up scoring, but if you can't see the bigger problem from that, yes, in that, that play right there, that, that possession, he was able to score anyways. But if you can't see the bigger problem that that, that shows – you're missing it. You're completely missing the picture. If you can't see that, you're missing it. Jane Ivey's like that. Alec Burks looking to score for himself. Kevin Knox looking to score for himself. He's not some passer. Marvin Bagley looking to score for himself. Heck, Diallo got minutes tonight looking to score for himself. This team has one rotation player who looks to play the right way. And it, it causes the team to you, – you get isolations that go into nothing. The, the Hawks were running a Kong Wu – and Capella together sometimes. They were running Okongwu and Collins next to each other sometimes. Two shot blockers at all times. And Jay and Ivy and Boyan Bogdanovich and Isaiah Stewart and Alec Burks on back to back to back on just numerous occasions continue to drive into both of them who are helping and not making the right skip pass or the right kick out pass and looking for the right player. No, because they're just looking for themselves. This team has a roster issue because every player on the team only looking for themselves. And it does nothing but hurt everyone. Because if each, if each one of these players who play like that were on a team where they were just one of two guys to do it and one of just three guys to do it, then it'd be okay. Nine of their ten rotation players play like that. You're not going to get ball movement. You're not going to get guys to develop good habits. All that's being hap that's happening right now are guys that are developing bad habits and are playing the wrong way and it's stunting their development. It's... It, it, it's 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 so it's in, it's easily the most frustrating thing to watch on this team. The fact that no one on this team plays for each other, no one does. This is something I brought up at the beginning of the year, like in the first week. I said this is something to watch for. I brought it up. You guys remember those of you guys who have been listening to the podcast all year. I brought this up at the beginning of the year and said let's watch for it. We are now in December. We're at Christmas, and it's gotten worse. This team doesn't play the right way. These players don't play the right way. These players don't play team basketball. These players don't play for each other. It's it's it, it makes for a terrible terrible watch watch, and it doesn't help any of them. It doesn't help any of them. I I, I could go on. I could seriously just go on for another like twenty minutes about this. There was a possession like I mentioned to you guys in the second quarter. There was a possession in the third quarter where Jay and Ivy got trapped and he forced a shot around the rim. There was a possession in the third quarter where Jane Ivy ISO for 20 seconds of the shot clock and took a step back, one legged uh, pull-up jump shot. There was a possession where Boyan Bogdanovich, he, uh, what, I forget who it was. I think it was Bagley who had the mismatch. And instead of hitting Bagley with the mismatch, I believe he had like Trey Young on him. Boyan Bogdanovich drives into o Onyeka Okongwu and 
you know what happens there. It's it you. This team, it, this is on the players and the coaches. The players don't play that way. They have to get better. They have to play for each other. They have to learn how to play team basketball. And the coaching staff needs to be drilling. They should not be allowing this to continue to happen. But because they have a lack of an offensive system, because their offensive system is really bland and they have no creativity to it, what happens? I told you guys this all off season two. Guys will fall back into bad habits because there's no structure offensively. There's no creative system. Guys are able to just play freely in offense, and you fall into bad habits. It falls into isolation. And this is something that you could track all the way to Toronto teams with Dwayne Casey. It's a lot of isolations, and guys just fall into bad habits. It, it's it's horrific to watch. I can't. I, it, 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 it's so hard. It's so hard to watch. So hard. But when we come back, man, I'm done on that topic. When we come back, I'm, I'm going to continue my rant. I said we're going to go somewhere else. It's something else that was shown in this game that is one of the biggest issues with the Detroit Pistons. We'll talk about that when we come back. But first, I got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors. Actually, I got to tell you guys about a message from the NHTSA. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every single state, even the states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, even your parents can tell, everyone around you can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high and get a DUI. Paid for by the NHTSA. So I want... Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. I, you guys can tell I'm just really worked up, man, because this is something I've been holding this in. I'm trying to, you know, I, I didn't want to come on the podcast. You know, I wanted to give it some time. I wanted to give it some time. I didn't want to get some negative so fast. I wanted to give it some time. But we have a large enough sample size of this, man. Large enough sample size of everything I just talked about in that first segment. And the next thing I want to talk about is, is another roster issue. And it's something we spent a large majority of the last podcast talking about. Not only does this team have a bunch of players who play for themselves and play selfishly and, and, and don't play the right way and look for themselves, but all those players are also trashed on defense. All of them. All the players that also don't want to play the right offensively, all the players that only look for themselves, only care about buckets offensively, are the same players who don't care defensively, who can't play defense, who choose not to play defense, who miss assignments, who don't go over screens, who don't play hard through screens, who take it lackadaisical on defense. The Pistons gave up 130 points to the Atlanta Hawks, and Trey Young didn't touch the floor in the fourth quarter. He did not touch the floor in the fourth quarter. Trey Young obliterated the Detroit Pistons in pick and roll coverage. The drop coverage was horrific. He was picking them apart. He looked like a magician out there, a surgeon at his work, a surgeon with the patient on the table, which was the Detroit Pistons, and he was just slicing them up over and over and over again. He didn't even play the fourth quarter. He had 26 and 13. This team scored 130 points without Trey playing a singular quarter. It's because they don't play defense. They don't care for defense. They only care about getting buckets. And none of them are good enough to be that way. Newsflash, none of you guys are good enough to, to, to oh my God. None, none of the players on the team are good enough to not care about defense and then also not play the right way offensively. If you're a fantastic ISO player and you could drop 30 on 60% in true shooting percentage, okay, you probably would get, get less talk talked about you. But you can't be inefficient. You can't turn the ball over three times, four times if you're Alec Burks and Boyan Bogdanovich. You can't do that and then also not play defense. It's it. I, this team has a roster issue, and as much as you know, listen, I don't agree with everything Dwayne Casey does X and O wise. And we'll talk about something I have, you know, a little criticism I have for some some coaching staff stuff later. But this one, this specific thing here, is not on Dwayne Casey. This is a roster issue, and look in the bigger picture, they they will be able to this this won't be as big of a problem because in the bigger picture, the whole point of this was to find out who's going to be on the team this year or next year. 
Who can we build around moving forward? Who can be around Cade? And what positions do we need to feel, uh, fill out? So at the end of the day, they're going to find out that answer by the end of this year. So the process of it will be hard for us to watch. And the process of it may hurt some players. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to get that answer nonetheless. So it may not hurt them in the bigger picture. But in the moment, this is a roster issue. They don't. They simply just don't have the players for Dwayne Casey to sub in or, or play someone different. Because every, like I said, everyone on the rotation does. There's only one player who doesn't play that way. It's exhausting. It's it's absolutely exhausting to deal with. And now I'm gonna move into something else. So you got the defense as an issue. You got the offense of the players the issue, and then you also got the issue of. What's the kindest way I can put this? You got you got the issue of maybe not as creative of an offense as you want out there. That's that's the kindest I can put it. The Detroit Pistons are playing the Atlanta Hawks, everyone. Trey Young is shredding them on offense. Shredding them. Absolutely just picking them apart. Trey Young is also six feet. Trey Young is probably responsible for, I haven't looked, but he's probably was responsible for like 60 of the, the Hawks points. So he's dominating you offensively. The downside to having Trey Young is that he gives up. He's supposed to be giving up just as much as he's given you for the, the Hawks. So, for example, if the Detroit Pistons are allowing Trey Young to, you know, total for 60 points, whether it's through assist and scoring, Then you attack him and try to get him to give you back 65 because that's what his downfall is, is that he's so small defensively and he's not going to try that hard defensively. So you try to get him to give up more than he's giving. However, though, you know, maybe this was rocket science. Maybe this was something, you know, maybe they looked in the crystal ball and they're just smarter than all of us. Maybe this is a long-term play that we just didn't see. Maybe we're not seeing this this long-term play. Maybe I missed it. But the Detroit Pistons are the only team I've ever seen play the Atlanta Hawks that do not put Trey Young in every offensive action when they come down the floor. I, I, my mind was just blown. I, bro, if you, I want you, if you guys ever have any free time, catch an Atlanta Hawks game and watch what opposing teams do. They are attacking Trey Young every possession defensively. Every, every possession. It doesn't mean it ends up in isolation on Trey Young. But he's he's involved in every action. Every action. They're making him work and they're attacking him, trying to get switches across the board. Maybe he doesn't want to switch and now you get a slip and you get all, all kinds of stuff can happen when you get him involved in defense because he does not want to play defense. He's not a good defender. He doesn't want to be on the defense. So teams put him through the 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 absolute ra- like railing on defense. The Pistons just didn't do it. I don't get it. There was a possession I have clocked in right here. I have so many possessions written down right here. I really want to do a big breakdown of all this because I just started writing them down at a certain point. After after the second quarter, I just started writing down each possession that went this way, and it, that, that pissed me off. because I, I was going to just start clipping them out and tweeting them out. But there was a possession in the third quarter. I believe it's at, at around the seven-minute mark. Boyan Bogdanovich brings the ball down the floor. Now, this is after they've done ran two pin downs for Boyan Bogdanovich back-to-back on offense. Not involving the, the pin down the guy who's pinning down isn't Trey Young's defender. It's it's Jalen Duran. So they're not even going at Trey Young in those possessions. But now you got a possession here in the third quarter. I have run down. Seven around seven minutes left. Boyan Bagdanovich leaves the brings the ball down the floor. Trey Young is guarding Killian Hayes. The Detroit Pistons planted Killian Hayes in the corner and allowed Trey Young for multiple possessions to just relax in the corner. He he didn't move more than two steps on defense, on multiple possessions, in route to him dicing you up on offense. So you're allowing him to present, to use all his energy offensively, and then defensively, you're allowing him to just play in the corner and not move. Like you're playing 2K23, you're playing Pro-Am, and you're hiding the 6'1 guard in the corner. I felt like I was watching a live 2K Pro-Am game while I was watching happen out there. My, my mind was blown then. My mind is still blown right now that I was watching the Detroit Pistons get shred by Trey Young on offense, and then we're allowing him to conserve the energy moving forward by just hiding him in the corner and not moving him around. I I can't. I, I It doesn't – look, 
I'm not some rocket scientist, okay? I'm not an NBA head coach. I don't claim to know every single thing. I don't claim to be the smartest person on earth. I, I, I'm I, Look, I'm not a head coach. I'm not a co- assistant coach. I'm not, you know, on the training staff or player development staff. I'm not, I'm not any of that. But for the love of God, I think Stevie Wonder could watch the game and come away saying, oh, you know, uh, Trey Young, bad defender. Trey Young, you know, six foot. He's destroying you offensively. He's not having to work. He's having all his energy offensively. Well, I think you should probably put him in action on defense. Oh, I think hide, letting him hide in the corner and I have to move. I don't think that's the greatest idea. But, you know, I, maybe I just don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I like, Or maybe the 29 other NBA teams who don't do that, maybe they don't know what they're talking about either. Maybe the Pistons have the secret plot, the secret the secret stuff, the Krabby Patty formula that every other NBA team is trying to figure out and just didn't go their way tonight. Like, I, I don't know, fellas and ladies. I I don't I don't know. I, it, it's it's truly just it, everything wrong with this team was on display in this game. And I haven't even got to a few other things I'm gonna bring up in the final segment. But for the love of God, it's 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 tough, man. It's so tough. It's just some of the things that happen within a Pistons game. Watching a Pistons game, some of the stuff that happens within a game is it, it's just so shocking. It's just it, you don't believe it sometimes. Sometimes I just don't believe it. Anyways, when we come back, man, we'll finish this off uh, your Christmas Eve special episode. We'll finish it off with my final critique of what we saw in this Hawks game, and this is something we've seen mo- so many times this season for the Pistons. But stay tuned for that. First, I got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by better help. So don't you just wish sometimes, you know, I've went through some things in life. I went through some career decisions. You know, everybody in life has some stuff they have to figure out and make decisions on. And sometimes you just wish that life came with a user man- manual. But so, but unfortunately, it doesn't. So when life's not working for you, it's normal to feel like you're absolutely stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere and 100% online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist if things aren't clicking. You can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be any simpler and it's incredibly affordable. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched over 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on our podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button to the YouTube channel. Uh, leave us a five star review whenever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And I'm going to finish this podcast off with my final now critique of this team. And it's something that it just continues to happen all the time. <laughs> Jane Ivy is 20 years old. Killian Hayes is 21. Isaiah Stewart, 21. This team is young. But apparently. I must have missed the memo. I guess they're resting these guys for the playoff run that's coming in April. I I guess there's a playoff push coming. I didn't see coming. And and they're just resting them. They don't want to play them too many minutes. You you want to keep them fresh. So when they that playoff series comes around, they're they're ready. They're ready to turn it up to a whopping 32 minutes a game. They they they, you, they gotta be fresh for that one. But until then, they gotta average their 28. It, it's it's like come on, bro. And this is the way I'm gonna go with it right here. There has been now, this is not the only occasion this has happened. A lot of you guys have tweeted me about this. I've just avoided talking about it because I didn't feel like it was useful to talk about. But after this game, it's 100% something we're going to talk about. Killian Hayes ended this game with 17 points, five assists, five rebounds, two steals. He shot seven of 10 from the floor. He played 31 minutes. He was subbed down the third quarter and didn't come back in the fourth quarter until four minutes left in the game. Now, mind you, this game had ballooned to about a 25-point game while he was out. It, was, it wasn't that bad while he was in. 
He immediately goes out. The offense doesn't know what the hell to do. They don't know how to run a damn play, run a set. And now it's ballooned to 25-point game. He comes back in with four minutes left. There has been probably, I think, at least three to five games this year that could have been a way better stat line for Killian Hayes. He could have had an even better ba- basketball game than he had if he would have been afforded minutes by his head coach. But again, I guess they're w- resting these players for the long-term playoff push. I don't get it. He's 21 years old. Why is he only playing 31 minutes? Why are all the starters, why are all these young guys not being pushed to 35 minutes a game? Especially when they're having great games. Why are you not, why are they not, why are the Pistons not riding the hot hand? Why Why are they cutting, why are they purposely trying to take their own players out of rhythm? I, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. On numerous occasions this year, it's not just killing he's done it to. It's not just killing the Pistons have done it to. But it's happened to him about three to five times. It's happened to multiple players. Why, when the guys are having good games, do your does your own team sabotage your good game? Why are they not taking advantage of and letting you play longer? Why are they not playing you more minutes? There's, Killian was the best player on the court for the Detroit Pistons tonight. We've said that a few times the last few months, or last month or so. But yeah, he only played 31 minutes. I don't get it. It don't make sense to me. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. These guys, these guys are 20, 21, 22 years old. There's no reason why they can't play more than 30 minutes a game. No reason. No reason for it. They can play longer than 32 minutes in a game. I promise. I promise you they won't be too tired. Like, it's it, this team is just so incredibly frustrating, guys. It's, a, it's just so incredibly frustrating to watch. They don't play for each other. They don't pass the ball around. They don't play team basketball at all. None of them. There's one player in the rotation that does. You consistently see him make the right pass. No one else does. They don't play defense. They only have about probably two above average defenders in their entire rotation. Two. Don't play for each other. Don't play defense. They don't play smart. They don't attack mismatches. They don't ride the hot hand. They don't, they don't, it's it literally, it's just, it, if someone, if you guys have a friend or a family member and they ask you, what's wrong with the Pistons? Why are the Pistons not good this year? Why are they struggling this year? What, what's going on with them? Instead of giving them a, a long drawn out answer, just, just, just print out this game you know, copy this game film, send it over to them, and just tell them watch this game. This game right here, the game that was played on December twentieth against the Atlanta Hawks. Just print this game out, send it to them, and say watch this game, and then check me out after. I can't do it much longer, fellas. I I can't. I can't. I can't do it much longer. That's all I've got though for you guys today, man. That's all I've got. It is like, and, and you know, actually, you know, the last thing I'm going to say, I do have one more thing to say. You guys know before the year, I, I wasn't asking this team to win games. I didn't expect them to win games. But I think it's right. I think it's okay to ask as a fan, as someone who covers the team, as someone who wants to see this team play well, as someone that wants to see this team do well in the future, as anyone who watches this basketball team routinely, it's okay for people to ask and, and, and want and demand that the team at least plays the right way that the team at least plays for each other, that the team at least plays team basketball. It, it, team basketball, or plays the, playing the right way, well, still won't get this team any wins. But at least in the process of losing, you can stomach it more. Because you can see they're trying to play for each other. They're just not good enough yet. They're getting better. They're learning how to play the right way. They're developing good habits. You can live with that. They, You guys are able, fans are, are able to demand that out of their basketball team. And too often, about 90% of these games this year, especially this Atlanta Hawks game, you don't get that. You get a bad basketball team. You get bad basketball play along with a bunch of selfish and 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 just not the right way to play the game of basketball. It's, it's, it's awful. But that's all I've got for you guys today, man. Um, again, like I said, Merry Christmas Eve. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. We'll be back on Monday with a podcast. Um, 
Again, have a great one. Enjoy it with your family. Have an incredible time. I hope you guys get everything you guys asked for this year. Um, thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Lockdown Pistons. Give us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. <sighs> and until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there, especially if you're in, in Michigan. The weather is crazy. The snow's crazy. Stay safe out there on the roads. Uh, go Pistons, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.